Gun control is once again back center stage after the tragic school shooting in Texas. As we record this video, at least 19 children were killed in addition to two teachers. And that shooting came just 10 days after another 10 people had been shot dead in a grocery store in Buffalo, New York. Gun control has proven one of the most vexing issues in American politics for decades. And very little has happened at a federal level to enact further gun reforms. President Biden, commenting on the Texas shooting after he had returned from Asia, called for politicians to show backbone. Why do we keep letting this happen? Where in God's name is our backbone? But Biden knows as well as anyone how much of an uphill climb there is in order for any kind of gun control to be enacted. Biden was vice president to President Obama when the Sandy Hook shooting happened in Connecticut in late 2012. Obama made a big push for gun control in the wake of that tragedy, but ultimately it failed. Around that time, there was one bipartisan effort to enact fairly modest gun control legislation. That was proposed by Senator Joe Manchin and Senator Pat Toomey. At the time, it got majority support in the Senate, but not the 60 vote supermajority to advance. And that was where that path ended. These days, there is a somewhat different dynamic to the gun control debate. There has been a growth in gun control groups at a grassroots level, and they have involved thousands of Americans in their efforts, and they've enjoyed some success at the state level. But federal legislation has been a different matter. When it comes to resistance to gun control, we can't ignore the role of the NRA and other so-called gun rights groups. It's not just that the NRA spends a lot of money. It's that it is perceived to have been very effective at political mobilization. Certainly the consensus among political insiders is that there are more so-called single issue voters who favor the NRA's position, that is opposition to gun control, than there are single issue voters who favor curbs on gun rights. One of the interesting things though is that that isn't exactly where the general public is. In one poll last year, for example, there was overwhelming support for universal background checks, including from Republican voters. The outlook for gun control still seems very uncertain, however. President Biden is adamant that there should be some kind of new measures, but it's pretty clear that Republicans have limited interest. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell, while expressing horror about the events in Texas, has not suggested any new openness to gun control measures. The situation is complicated further by simple math. In the Senate, 60 votes are needed to advance legislation. Since the Senate is split 50-50, that means Democrats would need to draw 10 Republicans over to their side, even if they could hold their own party together. There are, of course, other actions that could be taken. Republicans are often seemingly more comfortable talking about the need for improved mental health care. And there's also a debate about how you could strengthen the protection of schools with metal detectors, security guards, even some people suggesting arming teachers. This has been a very dark week in the United States. And when it comes to hopes of legislative progress on gun control, there are not many signs of light.